100 kilogram car starts from rest at the end of a driveway that is 7 meters long. If an average friction force of 3,500 newtons impedes the motion and there is a 6,500 newton forward force acting on the car, what is the speed of the car at the bottom of the driveway? All right, let's draw a picture. So here's one end of the driveway. Car starts there. Okay. And the car moves along that way to the other end of the driveway. And this driveway is seven meters long. Okay. We know some things about this car. It has a mass of 1,800 kilograms. We already wrote down this seven meters. Now, seven meters is a distance. We can use the letters D, X, or Y to represent a distance. In this case, I'm going to use D. If I chosen to use X and later realize there's a D in my equation, I just need to realize it's the same thing. Okay, just a little bit different notation. All right, so we got. 800 meters, 7 meters long. The average friction force, let's say it's static friction because it's rolling. If you say kinetic, that's okay as well. But it's 3,500 newtons. And so in my picture, that force is going to be impeding the motion, so it's going to be going back. And we also have a 6,000 500 newton force, <coughs> forward force acting on the car. It's an applied force acting forward. Okay, it says what is the speed of the car at the bottom? So we've got our picture, we've got our givens. We are trying to find the speed at the bottom or at the end of the driveway. So we're trying to find the final velocity of this car. So Let's go ahead and look at our work kinetic energy theorem equation. It says the net amount of work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. Well, we're not really going to find these variables listed over here. Okay, So we have to think about what does the net amount of work mean? Well, it means that we need to take a force times a distance times the cosine of the angle between the direction the force is going and the distance the object travels. Now, if it's the net amount of work, then I need to use the net amount of force acting on the object. The change in kinetic energy means take your final kinetic energy and subtract your initial kinetic energy. It does matter that final is first. Final minus initial. And kinetic energy is one half m V squared. So in my final kinetic energy, my mass is not going to change. I need my final velocity minus one half m v i squared for my initial kinetic energy. Now I can start to try to substitute in. Again, I need the net amount of force. We've got two forces over here. Okay. We'd also have a gravitational force and a normal force. But in this picture, we've got the car moving along horizontally, so they're going to cancel each other out. So when I go to find the net force, I just need to simply subtract the two because they're going in opposite directions. Okay? So 6,500 newtons minus 3,500 newtons is 3,000 newtons. Times the distance traveled, which was 7 meters, times the cosine of the angle between the force applied and the direction the object goes. Well, I have in my picture the applied force is going to the right. The car is going to the right. The angle between to the right and to the right is zero. Okay, so we have 3,000 times 7, which is 21,000, times the cosine of zero, which is just one, so we end up with 21,000. On the right hand side, we have one half the mass, 1,800 kilograms, times the final velocity squared, which we don't know, minus one half. 1,800 kilograms times the initial velocity, which we did not write down, but we do know. An 1,800 kilogram car starts from rest. So we missed that earlier, okay, in our givens. It starts from rest. The initial velocity is zero. Well, in this term, we're going to have zero squared, which is zero, and then zero times all this, which is going to be zero. 
Then we're going to subtract zero. So this is going to kind of cancel out. Okay, this term is just going to disappear over there. All right. Then we can go ahead and simplify the first part here. Half of 1,800 is 900 times the final velocity squared. And again, we would subtract zero, but then we could just add zero to both sides and end up where we are right now. So now we need to divide both sides by 900. And we will get 23 and 33 hundredths equal to the final velocity squared. We need to take the square root of each side, and we are going to end up with 4 and 83 hundredths meters per second. And again, I keep saying velocity because I see the letter V there, but we're actually looking at a speed here because we're not worried about the direction. Okay, So 4 and 83 hundredths meters per second is the final speed of the car.